In this day and age, people are more inclined to go to therapy and encourage others to do the same. But what happens when you don't have the money to get the help you need? Nonprofit organizations are the backbone of many cities. And just as many of us had to adapt to the myriad of changes over these past few years, nonprofits had to learn to provide services to their communities over the COVID-19 pandemic as well. Like many people of my generation, I was introduced to Dungeons and Dragons by Stranger Things. I still remember clearly the opening scene from the first season, where Dustin, Mike, Lucas, and Will were playing in Mike's basement. They were coming to the end of their campaign, and Will had cast the last spell to take out their final foe. From that moment on, I was enthralled with the game. Therapy is not only important for some people, but crucial. Reports show that Gen Z has a higher rate of depression and other mental health conditions. I spoke with Deja Williams, a college student and security guard who currently is not in therapy. Not because they don't want to, but because she can't. Since these organizations don't earn any type of profit for their owners, they rely heavily on donations and support. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many of these nonprofits face similar struggles with figuring out different ways to give back to and help their respective communities and provide services the way they would in pre-COVID times. Dungeons and Dragons is fairly simple to play. First, you have the players, who each create their own unique characters. And you also have the Dungeon Master, which I'll let Jay, who is currently a DM for their party, explain. The Dungeon Master is responsible for creating the entire world outside of those player characters. So everything from narrating the environment to playing the non-player characters, enemies, monsters, How do we expect this generation to succeed if they don't have the right resources to do so? I don't think that it's like expensive for like someone who's trying to make a living for themselves, but then it's it's expensive for me to have to pay that entire like hourly rate. People usually go to the doctor once a year. So like spending $100 once a year is very different than spending 250 a week. Here's how we can be supportive to you now with technology. And in the end, really, a lot of positive impact and things occurred, and the changes that these nonprofits underwent kind of helped them grow and develop and led to better ways to give back to their communities. Ultimately, the thing that brings new people in all the time is the community, the imagination, and the fun that comes with creating new characters to goof off with your friends. Despite all the hardship brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, it allowed Dungeons & Dragons to become more accessible to more people than it had before. Patrick Baker Evans reporting. Thank you for listening. As teenagers, burnout is something that many of us have felt at some point, whether it's at school or in an after-school job. Eventually, we feel that there's a point where we have We have no energy, and we struggle to motivate ourselves to do the work that we have to do to get through the day. No, you're you're definitely right about that. I feel like I don't know, like, a single person who hasn't gone through burnout. One thing I've noticed about burnout and stress that people think is, like, similar in a way, but I feel like they do definitely have, like, some key differences. And I was talking to my friend Serenity about it. The difference between burned out and stressed or what I believe the difference to be is that I feel like when you're stressed you're under a lot of pressure but you still can keep going you know like I feel like you can kind of push past it and get what you need to get done depending on the person of course but me personally when I'm stressed I feel like I can push through it and I can kind of convince myself that I'm okay you know and then be okay because I feel like you can overcome being stressed however I feel like being burnt out it's kind of like you just can't anymore like you just kind of you're gone like you just want to go home and go to sleep like you just don't want to be awake you're exhausted beyond comprehension beyond belief you know and you just you don't you you just can't power through it you know yeah and there's been times where I couldn't really tell if I was stressed or just burnt out Sometimes being burnt out can fuel my stress, and because I can't think of ideas for like. My friend Raymo told me about what she does to combat feeling burnt out. I think that what I did was kind of create a support system with my friends. 
in that I could like lean on them like we would sometimes call or do a zoom call and work together which really motivated me to keep studying because I wasn't by myself my focus was better when I was with my friends um and also asking for extensions at the end of the year like just talking to my teachers and explaining to them how I'm feeling was really helpful because they did give me extensions when I needed them definitely I think that can be super helpful and also I think taking an active approach to the problem and just working to figure out things to help you feel better like taking breaks or setting boundaries yeah, for yourself exactly. can really make a difference when it comes to getting over burnout we should but we should also acknowledge that sometimes you can't really set those boundaries especially in school where the teachers have the final say on the time you have to work on a project it's an environment that we students have very little control in and while these strategies i mentioned can temporarily help with putting off that burnout they don't really cut down the ultimate source of that burnout uh, yeah and as our society is talking about burnout more and more we should take this more systemic view of how burnout happens into account as we look for ways to deal with it moving forward. 